Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, Parlor, and Instagram. And of course, be sure to visit www.mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. I guess what fans should realize is that uh, what they do can be tremendously uh, impactive for good or bad. The Deadites, they're amazing. I think the fan base for this genre is wonderful. I'm amazed at how the fans react. They're extremely passionate and they will drive miles just to get an autograph. People wanted my autograph. I had no idea that it was such a big hit. What? This movie? A vacation would be good in a abandoned cabin in the woods. I'll take the night. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 309. An upcoming documentary that all horror movie fans should really keep an eye out for is Hail to the Deadites. It's a tribute to the legacy and fandom of the Evil Dead franchise made by fans of the Evil Dead franchise an exploration into the intense impact a movie can have on a community of like-minded individuals. Hell to the Deadites also pays tribute to the positive side of fandom and the creativity that stems from it. And joining me now to talk to on the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is the director of Hail to the Deadites, Steve Villeneuve. Steve, I thank you very much for taking time to talk to me today. Uh, hello, Matthew. Thank you for uh, having me on your podcast. So, you know, making a movie, that's such a big investment of anyone's time, finances, energy. And I know with this movie in particular, this took like almost like something like seven years for you to really get from concept to up to screen. What is it about The Evil Dead as a movie, as a, as a I don't know how else to approach it, as a mythology uh, that really kind of spoke to you to such a degree that you want to put that investment, that energy into making the movie, not only about the making of that film, but the impact that it had on people like yourself. Um, I'm, I'm just a, a super big fan of the entire franchise, you know, and, and when I'm saying the entire franchise, I'm including the, uh, the reboot the, or remake, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even the, the, the TV show, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the rare franchise that like didn't do something really bad. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I think everything that was done, like in the Evil Dead universe, uh, if I can say, call it call it that way, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's 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 all pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people don't like the remake and reboot, and most of the time they're saying, "Well, I don't like remakes." So, so for me, it's it's not really a good reason. But I think like they did a terrific job when they when they did it, and 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 yeah. Uh, as for the Evil Dead, you know, uh, I remember I. I saw Army of Darkness first when I was young. I saw it on TV. It was a paid TV channel that we had at my parents' house. Um, and and I, I guess I was... I guess I was like 13 because you know, like the movie came out in 1992. So maybe like a year after we had it on TV. So I, I remember watching it and, and was like blown away. I was like, wow, this film is so cool. And then... Maybe a year after, a couple of years after, I don't remember when exactly, but uh, I saw Evil Dead 2. And I remember that I saw that one uh, after because, you know, I was in a video store and I kind of spot the um, the VHS artwork, which is amazing. You know, and the name Evil Dead 2, like I didn't do the connection between Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness because like two different complete name, you know. Uh, so I remember that we rent it, we watch it. I was like, wow. And, and I, I, did, I didn't realize it was the same character. And it's mm. maybe like one or two years after that, that I was in another video store and I saw the artwork for Evil Dead 1. The thing that is different here is that, you know, I'm, I'm from Canada, I'm from Montreal. So all the sleeve that we have in a video store back in the days were all in French. Mm-hmm. So... Army of Darkness was like, like l'armée des ténèbres, which is exactly Army of Darkness in uh, in in, uh, in French. Evil Dead Two was Evil Dead Two, mm. and like they they didn't they didn't change the title, but Evil Dead One, they completely changed the title to uh, L'Opéra de la Terreur, which is in French. So 
there is no, it's impossible to do a connection between the French title of Evil Dead 1 and the, the English one, the original one in, here in, in Quebec. So like we ran the movie and we start watching it and I was super confused. I was like, I saw that film before, but there was less character. Mm. So I was, I was like really, really, so, and in back in the days, like you don't have internet, so you, you can't really do the connection when you're like 15 or 13. I don't remember uh, how, how, what, what, what was my age back in the day. And then and I started just loving all films and, and remembering like, like I, I bought them and it's one of the first film that I bought on DVD also when I, when I, I got my DVD player. So, uh, so yeah, I'm just, I, I just love the franchise. I think what your film does so well and I think you, you kind of touched on it then is that it really kind of brought me back to that first time seeing these Evil Dead movies and, and the kind of impact that it had on me as well because I'm a huge fan of the Evil Dead films, especially the second one. And I remember the first time I watched them, we actually couldn't get them in on DVD in Australia. I had to order it from the States. And at that time, this is like the early 2000s, DVDs were like really expensive because our kind of newish technology. So it did cost me quite a bit, but I mean, I got the first movie and I loved it, but the second film, and like you said, you watch that first kind of 20 minutes, and you're like, wait a minute, this kind of seems familiar, um, but it's different all at the same time because what happened, what follows afterwards is just fantastic. And I think it really opened me up to like a whole new realm of horror filmmaking because at the time, the horror movies that I watched were kind of like, you know, you're usually your slasher stuff and, and, I, and I loved the Exorcist and films like that, but you know, Evil Dead was just a, such a different different experience uh, that still quite has a quite an impact on me as a film fan to this day. And your film is just filled with fans like this. And like I said in the intro, it's a movie by the fans for the fans. And yeah. a lot of the fans that you feature in your movies are really kind of hardcore collectors, cosplayers. You have so many different people here. I'm just curious, how do you get in? Who do you approach first to go and come in your movie? Was there like a list of people that you knew of having met in previous conventions or have you heard of people before to share the same passion of you? How, how does this start and who do you contact first? The, the only person that I knew uh, was Tom Sullivan because uh, I met him at the Actually, at Cinema Wasteland, at the convention that uh, that we, we we did the interview with him, and that you can see is uh, his museum and in, in the con. Uh, it's it's the only person that I really knew, uh, beside Martin, which is like with me the entire uh, the entire film. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I I knew Martin because we were doing short films, and our short films were always screening at the same time in different uh, festival here in in in, in Quebec, uh, and uh, and I knew him because of that and I knew that he was a huge horror fan and um, and I remember just like I sent him a Facebook message telling him like hey I'm doing I'm starting to do this documentary like you want to tag along you want to come with uh, uh, with us in the in at Cinema Wasteland in Strangeville Ohio and 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 be in the documentary and uh, and he, he was like yes I'm gonna do it so so like at the same time it's the beginning of like the documentary, but it's also the beginning of a friendship, which is super cool. But regarding all the other uh, fans, the other deadites that uh, you, uh, you can see in the movie, um, I, I didn't know any of them. Um, I, I kind of, you know, when I decided to start doing the documentary, you know, I decided to do it because, you know, I was a huge collector. Uh, well, I'm saying huge collector. I start collecting Evil Dead stuff maybe like a year before starting the, the production of the movie. And, and I was like, like, if I have like 50 or 60 different copies of the Evil Dead, you know, from around the world or something, I'm pretty sure other people have like more than that so so i went online and i i i, I type uh the biggest uh the biggest uh, evil dead fans on on google you know mm. and and then boop, the 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 contest from ig and the clip with brie comments pop up i watched the clip and i was like wow uh this is uh this is amazing so i i look looked for her on facebook reach out to her she replied we start to talk and she's the one who really like like introduced me to all those people because you know she was aware and she was in this I can say Deadites family 
like like all the Facebook because there's so many Facebook page and and everybody's helping each other and everybody know each other all the like the big collectors they all know each other so she she's the one who did like the the introduction uh, for me to to all those uh, all those people. So one thing, another thing your film does is that it really takes us into the world of fan conventions, um, mm-hmm. in conventions of all sorts, horror conventions, pop culture, all through kind of like North America. Um, you just travel to all these different places over the years. You met a lot of different people. Um, you know, we ha- we do have conventions here in Australia, not to the extent that you guys have up in Canada and people have in the states as well. Um, the whole kind of convention scene, and I know you run a few different conventions as well. Um, what is that energy like when you go to a convention like that and you hang out with cosplayers and with you know, people in the booths and you have stars like Bruce Campbell in attendance? What is, what is that like? And considering this year that a lot of conventions have been placed on hold, um, does, can you really feel that kind of like that void uh, missing this year, that kind of uh, connectivity with other fans? Is the internet enough? Is a Zoom convention enough to really replicate that? Or do you really need to be boots on ground amongst the other people to really feel that energy? I'm I'm a huge huge fan of convention. Like I discovered the uh, the world of horror con because of my uh, my first film that I did in 2005. It it was a an independent anthology horror film, a little bit like like Creep Show, but it, like the name was Stories of a Grave Digger. It's not really good, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we like like we we did the film. We did a run of a thousand copies, and we're like, "Oh, we need to go somewhere to sell that." So, so we start looking on the internet and find different convention. And I went there, and I, I completely fall in love with the uh, with the shows. Uh, it's 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 so it's an amazing amazing like emotion to be somewhere where you know that everybody here likes what you what you know what what you love which is horror film and 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 like the it's not not only about the fandom you know i really call this like the the, the convention family mm-hmm. uh, and 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 you you meet people from a con to another like it's it's really it's really weird like to go to uh shock stock here in canada in london ontario go to this convention and like six months after you're going to a, a convention in uh, in uh, called horror hound in indianapolis and and you run to the same guy that you saw at, a, at another con which is like 12 hours of drive from one to each other mm. um i uh, our con for me are 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 a must like right now i i need oricon uh, i didn't do any uh any uh, virtual one uh the main reason is that uh you know the 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 cool thing about the con is not is not only to to be there and talk with celebrities and watch panel it, it's it's for me it's it's the entire road trip you know yeah like like it's like okay guys we're gonna i'm gonna be at your place at that time be ready and well and then you're driving eight nine ten twelve hours to go to go uh, to somewhere uh and 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 then you spend like the entire weekend like three or four days depending on where where the con is uh in an hotel room with your friends you're going shopping and then you you're finding a film and you're going uh upstairs in your room okay let's let's watch a movie you're watching uh a bunch of different movie during the weekend there's some screening you 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 meet with uh, with filmmakers uh, and, and it's it's something that was really important for me also in uh, El to the Light. it's it's to show this this world you know yeah. uh, because because i i love it so much and i think people should go to convention uh, like people should 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 take their car and and drive five, five six or seven hours just to just to be there to live at least to do it once, like to live like the the real experience of what a con is. And um, I think something that's really shown at these conventions is the real kind of like there's an intimate kind of connection between a movie fan and a specific movie. And in this film, you show really kind of different kind of stories, personal stories, highs and lows. There's a marriage proposal. Uh, mm-hmm. In there, uh, you mentioned before Tom Sullivan, who's the makeup artist for the Evil Dead films. He kind of resided over one of these kind of uh, over these kind of like a master of ceremonies of such. And then you also had a, a very heartbreaking story of one fan who talked about how his 11-month-year-old son 
um, passed away and how he, um, Bruce Campbell kind of comforted him uh, in a very kind of rare moment between uh, movie star and, and movie fan there that we're kind of like the the, vene- the v- thin veneer of those tiles are kind of stripped down as just like one human to another just talking there and it's it's really kind of really something else so I'm watching that um, I got to ask though that when it comes to that level of intimacy with a movie or a f- style of movie and especially when it comes to collecting um, all the different kind of merchandise you can have when is where is the line between say obsession and addiction um where does that line kind of begin where someone buys a say the fifth really re-release of army of darkness um because they really want it because they like the film as opposed to they really need it because it needs to go with the other things in, in your collection uh well if if i'm taking myself as an example um you know i will buy a lot of stuff but you know i i won't i won't pay uh like for example there's some people who who are gonna buy uh you know a rare blu-ray for example of i don't know which country we're limited and they're gonna pay like three or four hundred bucks for it i'm not Mm. gonna do that uh mainly because i have family in a house and you know and 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 the thing is that there, it's it's not like there there's so many different copies of Evil Dead available. Like they they're putting out a copy almost like every two years, here in the U.S. and and everywhere. So so at the end of the day, it kind of costs a lot a lot of money. Mm. Um, you know, I'm I'm also the, uh, collecting uh, uh, the movie Jason Goes to Well. Like you're gonna laugh. Like a lot of people hate that movie. I love it. I, mm-hmm. I love Jason Goes to Hell, and and this is this is different. Like there, it's not like Jason Goes to Hell have a thousand different copies of it. So, if someone I I see it at like I don't know fifty sixty bucks, I might grab it because you know I know that you know at the end of the day it's not gonna cost me uh, uh, my house like to buy, to buy a different copies, but. Um, uh, well, I, I don't know how to answer uh, to really answer your question. I I, th- I think uh, I yeah, it's uh, it, it's like mm, I I don't know how to answer your question exactly. Me- meaning like between the addiction and and and, and make it. I I, I think re- regarding the film, something regarding the uh, the celebrities and and being a, f- a fan and stalking like. Uh, the actor and everything. This is another another ballpark, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, it's fun to to go meet them at several show, but uh, but at some point, like you need to understand that they they have private life and they and it, it's not it's not because they don't like their fans, you know. They love their fans. Like 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 this is something that that uh, I discover. Even Bruce Campbell, you know, like he's super, like he he love his fan, but he's. He's seeing so many fans, you know, that he can't remember everybody. But, uh, but you know, the ladies of Devil that going to convention and meeting their fans, you know, it, they're not doing it because they, they they feel that they they have to do it. They're doing it because they want to do it. You know, mm. they they like they like the convention, they like the fans, they like the uh, the weekend and everything. Uh, like Ted Remy is saying in the documentary, you know, some some actor just fell into horror and are stuck with it, but uh, but some others just just like it. Yep, I mean the other end of the kind of like obsession of fandom is just how great sometimes the creativity can really stem from that. And what's really cool about your movie, and I was saying this to you um, off air before we started, is that I love the look of the film. I love how you put it all together. I think a big piece of that success is a lot of the um, fan create um, the the um, content that a lot of fans made themselves, um, original music, um, recreations of like the, the movie scenes, short films, etc. I mean, how how do you go out there and find these different kind of uh, pieces of content? Did you put a call out for Evil Dead fans to send you different stuff? Did you know of these kind of uh, different songs and different short movies and such um, for you and that you knew of before and decided that would look really good in your film? How did you actually mind the Evil Dead world to find these real kind of fan gems out there? 
Um, actually, like the the entire most of the the, the soundtrack is is coming from uh, a John, which is in the documentary. Uh, John is from UK, and you know when we start talking about it, he's like, "Do you know that there's a lot of amazing Evil Dead song?" I was like. <laughs> Uh, I know that there's some, but you know, and he, he sent me like two two CDs, uh, which were like completely full of uh, different songs with all the name of the bands and everything. Mm -hmm. So I start like um, listening to it, and I was like, well, there's some really really good song in that uh, in in this uh, in this CD. So so I think like we should we should really use those, you know. So we start contacting the bands and asking them if they want to jump in the in the project and most of them I, i'm saying most of them but they all accept to uh to uh to to have their, their song in the film and you know they, they did this tribute song to evil dead because they're a huge fan so having their song in a evil dead documentary for them it's 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 amazing and for us having this soundtrack is also amazing uh so so it was a a easy and simple connection connection and it's the same thing with the um with the fan footage film uh you know i fan footage i i, I search for a lot online i ask for different fans uh, a lot of fans uh, send send them their their link uh we, we got a, a lot of uh of Evil Dead fan film and uh, song also through our Facebook page mm -hmm. because like people were like you know I did a song like for example the the official trailer of the the documentary that we did in uh, August um well like the song in the movie is coming from a band and they contacted us maybe like 2 weeks before 3 weeks before so 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 they just sent us the music and I was like, wow, that that could be super cool in the trailer and and we did the trailer because of that song, you know. So uh, so yeah, it's it, it's always it, it's it's all those uh, kind of stories and also the fact that you know it took us like seven years and 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 like back in June in June and beginning of July I was still adding some uh, some new uh, Evil Dead. Uh, fan film uh, footage in it you know i was i was still looking on uh, on youtube and and found uh, two or three I, I guess i was like wow we need to put some some uh, clip of those uh, those fan film and i i contact them and uh, like we 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 work out with the, the paperwork and everything and we put the the the, the movie in the in the film it's all really terrific and i think it really it's really a good kind of uh alternative to when people use the word fanboy, you know, like, kind of like in a negative context. I think, I think, this, <laughs> film, I think this film really shows the positive um, a creativity, a creative impact that fans have. Um, they're, they're so moved by a movie that they create their own content. I think that's really a really great thing. Um, you, we've touched on fans appearing in the film. Also appearing in the film is pretty much almost every cast member of the first two Evil Dead movies, um, ranging from... Um, you know, Betsy Baker all the way to, to Dan Hicks. Um, but the big name that you did get in the film um, is none other than Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, from what I have come across of the man just in his interviews and such, he's, he really seems like a, a man of the people. Um, he seems to be someone th that is accessible, uh, of course, to a certain degree, because I'm here, I'm sure a lot of people want to have time with him. But he really comes across as a genuine kind of person. He's on my bucket list for sure of people I want to interview. I mean, I've, I, I to, to have that opportunity would just be fantastic. You have, you did have the opportunity to interview him. What was the process like in getting um, Bruce Campbell on camera? I mean, is it as simple as just putting a request to his agent and they set something up, or is this something that you really had to be like Ahab and you have to kind of hunt down your white whale? Um, how how difficult or not was it to get Bruce Campbell on screen? Um, it was a long process, but uh, like, like we didn't aim Bruce Campbell from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I knew that, like I, I, I want him in the film, but um, we 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 start like I start with Tom Sullivan because I I, I knew Tom, so we did the interview with Tom, and then uh, I I have contacted like the true Tom uh, and and the other. Um, Evil Dead fans that was already in contact with uh, with the ladies of Evil Dead, for example. So, uh, so we st I start contacting like every everybody uh, 
uh, one by one. Um, I was lucky because, you know, I was running the horror section of the Montreal Comic Con and the Ottawa Comic Con and the Quebec Comic Con here. Mm -hmm. So I was dealing with agent already uh, for, for having them uh, like in, in Montreal. So I brought the ladies of the Evil Dead in Montreal. There's some footage of... Uh, of of them uh, doing a panel in the uh, the documentary, um, and and then I met uh, the agent like Dominic, is the agent of the entire cast of Evil Dead too, so I start like talking with him, and he told me well, like in a year or in eight months or nine months I don't remember uh, the, the the exact time, but he was like the like everybody's going to be at the Horror Hound convention, so like if you want to do the interview. It would be like the perfect time for you. It's right there, so so like we we went to Horror Hound, and we did all the interview of the cast of Evil Dead Two there. Uh, we did the interview also of the ladies of the Evil Dead, um, and Al Delrich, uh, who plays Scotty in the original uh, Evil Dead, was also there. But like I knew that like two months after. Uh, he was going to be a guest at a convention here in Canada, in, uh, in Shockstock in London, Ontario. And there was the, at the same time, Devil did the musical. And I'm good friend with the, uh, the owner of the, the convention. And they were, they, they, they told me, yeah. And, and, um, Al is also going to go at the, as a, as a surprise, as a special guest at the, 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 the musical. So I was like, well, this is the perfect fit. You know, like we don't need him. At Horror Hound, like we really need him, like on a different, different time for the documentary, go, doing different things. So, so like all those interviews were done, like in like in two months, mm. and then, um, we we start doing some some teaser, some trailer, and then came the uh, the Bruce Campbell Horror Fest, which was at WizardCon in Chicago, and all the person that we already interviewed were going there plus that Remy was there and Bruce was about to be there. Mm. So it was like, okay, let's go. Let's go to the show. I knew that like Michael, John and Emmanuel, the three, the Michael and John are coming from the UK. They were doing the trip to go there yep. and Emmanuel from uh, Italy. I was going there. So like the main goal was to follow them during the weekend because, you know, it was a big part of the documentary and, and then trying to get an interview with Bruce. And um, and I, I I kind of did a request to his agent. He is the uh, he's also the agent of Ted Remy. So it, it was like um, you only like only one request. And getting Ted Remy was uh, was easier, meaning like like but it was easier. But we had to do it like at his boot during he was doing his signing. So yes. so we we really got maybe like five minutes with him. So not a lot of time. Um, and then, and then Bruce is super busy. So his, his agent was like, um, well, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it during the weekend and may, 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 maybe tomorrow, let's see tomorrow, come and come back and see me tomorrow. So we did this like for three days in a row. And on, on the Sunday afternoon, like the show was closing, I think at four. And it was maybe like two in the afternoon, and uh, we were standing there just talking with a bunch of, uh, of folks, and uh, and you know he walked through me and he saw me, so he make a detour. He came and see me, and he was like, "Okay, so we talk with everybody here, like all the the other cast, and everybody's telling us that you guys are super cool. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do: at four o'clock, you need to go in front of the door that you seen uh, down down the hall." Somebody's going to open uh, the door for you. You have 15 minutes to do your setup. Then Bruce gonna, uh, is going to come. He's going to be able to give you five to 10 minutes max because, you know, it's the end of the day. And then uh, you're going to send me the footage. I'm going to watch it. And if I, and I, I'm going to approve it. And then after you can use it in your doc. Hmm. So I was like, you know, I'm going to take whatever. So it, exactly what happened. But Bruce Campbell, he gave us a, a big 20 minutes. And I, I, I'm the one who kind of stopped the interview because I was like, I don't want to look like the guy who's, who's just like continuing to ask questions and then arriving at a point where he's going to say, okay, like I have to go. So, but, but when I stopped the interview, 
he sat down just next to us and talked with us for like another 20 minutes. So, so like he was, it was all good. And then his agent arrived. And, and when I started talking with him, I told him, well, can I have your business card? So I'm going to, so I can send you the footage. And Bruce heard that. Mm-hmm. And, and Bruce get up. He, uh, yeah, he got up and he, he, he told his agent, Mike, he was like, hey, uh, Mike, I saw what the, the guy did with the teaser and the trailer and their previous work. They are super cool. So uh, th- you don't need to approve the footage. Everything is fine. He asked me for the release form. He signed the release and he told me, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was amazing doing the interview. Now I need to go because I'm really tired because of the entire weekend. And he left and we got everything right there. So, uh, so it was, it was a, a, quite an adventure. But at the end, you know, hearing Bruce Campbell telling his agent like like he saw what we did in the past and that we're super cool and everything was amazing it, it's just like it's it's our paycheck you know yeah i mean and i think that story right there and i say this as well to like even to like up and coming film bloggers or what have you that you know when you're dealing with talent when you're dealing with whatever just be cool about it be professional yeah. and you'll get to where you're going don't try to do shortcuts or anything because i've seen you know, like especially in my earlier kind of years of doing this kind of stuff, people like try to take advantage of a situation and go over allocated times and such. And it doesn't really help anyone in the situation. So I think that's really cool. And I think Bruce's kind of uh, uh, reaction to you guys and, and the fact that he's seen your teaser trailer and all these other stuff, I'm pretty sure you'll think to yourself, wow, he knows who we are. And that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's you know, it's also... Like I kind of realized that you know, he he care. Another reason why I think like he care about fans and stuff. It's it's when, when you know uh, Adam like went to see him and like he knew about him. Mm. Like he knew he knew about him. He saw a picture of him uh, cosplaying Ash online and stuff. So, so at the end of the day, you know, uh, he, he's he, yeah. If of course, if you if you go to him to a con out of a context and you're like. Hey Bruce, I'm doing a documentary on Evil Dead. I want to do an interview with you. Can you do it today? Mm. He's gonna to tell you no, unfortunately, because you know there's no there, there's no track of what you did before, who you are. Uh, do you really want to do the interview, or you just want to murder him in the backstage mm. <laughs> backstory? So so yeah, I, I think when you're doing those kind of documentary, for example, there's step to to follow, and if you're following the step right, well well you know I. When I did Under the Scares, my first documentary, like I, I did an interview with Ursula Gordon Lewis, uh, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, Robert Kurtzman, who did the, the, the some special effect, you know, a, a bunch of of, of cool uh, cool celebrities, and and then I I'm currently working on the the sequel on the, of Under the Scares because while we were going to convention doing some interviews and stuff for L to the Dead Eyes, I was like, well, I'm at convention, so why can't I get any um, uh, interview with other horror icon for my my other documentary? So so far, I have I think four interviews. I have uh, Sid Egg, unfortunately he passed away. I have yes. Doug Bradley, Lena Quinney, uh, Mick Garris, uh, Debbie Rashan, Tiffany Shippers. You know, I, I have a bunch of, of of cool people, and you know, when they see that you're serious about it, and and they like the project, you know, they they're gonna jump in. You know, one of the things in the horror uh in the horror business I, I i think is that you know a lot of people you know realize that you know they they can do a living like even if they did a film only in 1997 for example because of how the horror convention and stuff like that so so they they they, they, they are really doing this because they love the business yeah. so doing interviews for doc for young filmmakers if they feel that it's going to be a good thing is that the project is serious they they they, they won't say no and um i think what you've achieved with the, with the movie hail to the dead eyes has just been fantastic it's uh, like i said a movie by the fans of the evil dead uh, about the fans of the evil dead and i myself am a big fan of the of the series and uh, i loved watching your film steve and congratulations to you and for everyone out there you can go to a website hail to the deadites.com and also a facebook page which is also hail to the deadites and you can find the latest information regarding um uh, where it could be appearing uh, at festivals near you um steve have you had any words yet in regards to general release uh, in regards to the movie uh well 
uh, we're planning to to do the the, the release here in Canada. Uh, I think in the spring in next year. You know, it's the 40th anniversary of Evil Dead in 2021. So mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it's it's the perfect time. Uh, regarding the U.S. distribution, uh, we just signed a deal, but like I can't talk about it right now, unfortunately. Sure. But uh, I'm super excited. Like I, I can't be more excited with the the, the label that we, we're going to be working with. Uh, so yeah, it's going to come next year too. I think I think everybody will be looking to do the the release next year because it's the 40th anniversary of the uh, of the original film. So it's 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 just it's just a perfect mix and match. And it'll be so great to see it, um, for everyone to see it next year, 2021, hopefully already looking better uh, with the release of Hail to the Deadites as compared to uh, this year. And um, Steve Villeneuve, I thank you again uh, for your time today and congratulations with the film. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you for having me.